Welcome to Walking by Faith, where we believe that God's relevance extends to every aspect of our lives. Our goal is to empower you with the tools you need to grow in your faith journey. And that's why you can access Pastor's Notes in a snap. Download the Walking by Faith app today to follow along. Satan's initial deception twists truth and robs humanity of their God-given authority, shaping today's world. Today we uncover how the demonic subtly infiltrates everyday life and we'll learn more strategies to guard hearts and minds. This isn't just another sermon, but it's your guide to spiritual victory in our modern battlefield. Let's get started. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 8 says this. For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? So my intention today is to give a very clear, very easily understood, very certain sound. I know I will say things today that are not politically correct, but they are biblically correct. Right? So I'm not trying to be politically correct, right? I'm not trying to be politically correct. I am not trying to, what the Bible calls, itch your ears and give you what you want to hear. I want to give you what the Bible tells us. So I want to begin in Ezekiel chapter 28, which says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 12, son of man, Take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre. Now, just a few verses before this, there is a prophecy to the prince of Tyre. And this is what God says. He says, you think that you're God, but you're not God. You're a man, right? That's the prince. But then he says, now take up a lamentation or a prophecy to the king of Tyre. Now, he's actually prophesying to a demonic spirit that is empowering and motivating the man, the prince of Tyre. It says, son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre. Say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Uh, Not a whole lot of people have been there in the garden of Eden. Every precious cone was your covering, sardes, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you in the day you were created. So this being was not born. This being was created. It said you were the anointed cherub who covers. So this being was one of the cherub angels in heaven and actually covered over the throne of God. You want to know who it is? Well, it's Satan himself. It says, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. So there's a man who is the prince of Tyre who thinks he's God, who's running a nation, but there is a demonic force behind him who the Bible refers to as the king, the real power behind what people could see. And it is Satan himself. Now, the first time that we find Satan in the Bible is in Genesis chapter three. And in the first verse, it says this. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And the woman, excuse me, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the first thing that Satan does when he comes is he he says, really, God is is lying to you. He's deceiving you. He's keeping something from you. But this is what he does. He comes by stealth. He comes with lies. He comes with deception. He comes to deceive. And he's actually coming to steal something. Remember Jesus said he comes to steal, to kill, 
and to destroy. And that's exactly what he's done right here. Jesus said he's the father of lies. He's lying. But he's coming to deceive. He's coming with deception. He does not come as a mammoth and lift his foot and say to Eve, Eve, eat of the tree or I'll crush you. And he doesn't come as a lion roaring and saying, eat the tree or I will attack you. That's not what happens at all. He comes with stealth. He comes to deceive. The only weapon he has is deception. He doesn't have power. He doesn't have authority. He can't make Adam and Eve do anything. He has to deceive them. So in Genesis chapter 2, in verse 15, And the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to tend, to guard, and to keep it. Now, God has created man and said, I give you dominion over the earth, over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over all the earth, everything that lives on the earth. I give you dominion over it. And he's supposed to guard and tend and keep this garden. Who is he guarding it from? Satan. That's who he's guarding it from. Remember, God said, let man have dominion. Now, that's what Satan has come to steal. He's come to steal that dominion. In fact, God creates all the animals and he brings them to to Adam. And the Bible says, whatever he would call them and whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name and its character. What Adam called it. Adam had the authority, the dominion in the earth. Psalms 115 says, the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Psalms 8, what is man that you're mindful of him, the son of man that you visit him? For you've made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. You've made him to have dominion over the works of your hands, and you have put all things, what things? All things under his feet. So what was Adam in dominion over all things. Everything was under his feet. But it's interesting, that's not what we find the condition of our world in today. 1 John 5, 19 says, we know for a fact that we are of God and the whole world around us lies in the power of the evil one, opposing God and his precepts. So the whole world around us is under the power of who? The evil one. Well, how did the evil one get into that position? Well, he had Adam and Eve rebel against God. And when he did, he took or usurped their authority. In Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter, Jesus is being tempted in the wilderness. He's been fasting for 40 days. Then the devil, taking him to a high mountain or a high place, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to Jesus, all this authority I will give you and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomsoever I wish. Now, if the devil's lying, there's no temptation. So the devil says, look, look at all of the kingdoms of the world, all their dominion, all their authority, all their glory. Somebody gave it to me. Well, who was it? It was Adam. And notice what else he says. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours because I can give it to whomsoever I wish. It's transferable. Adam lost it to Satan. And Satan says to Jesus, if you will bow before me, all of the authority, the dominion, and the glory of this whole earth, I will give it to you. And by the way, Jesus came to get it. But he didn't get it by bowing to Satan. He got it by defeating Satan. And the Bible says bringing him to naught, bringing him down to zero. So Satan has a kingdom. In 2 Corinthians 4.4, Satan is called the God, 
small g of this world. In uh, John's gospel, the 14th chapter, Jesus made this statement. He said, the prince of this world is coming. He's referring to Satan, and he has nothing in me. Jesus calls Satan the prince of this world. The Bible refers to Satan as the God of this world. Satan himself said, look, I've got all of the glory, all the dominion, all of the authority of all of the kingdoms of the world, and it's been delivered to me, and I can give it to whomsoever I wish. Now, Satan moves in and through government. I will say that again. Satan moves in and through government. He moves through politicians. You see, what's happening in the world today, much of what's happening is not God's will. That's why Jesus prayed and said, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a picture of the kingdom. When God's will is done on the earth like it is in heaven. So not all government is of God and not what all politicians do is of God or the will of God. I've heard people say, well, if that's what's happening, that's what God wants. Hosea chapter eight, verse four. They set up kings, but not by me. They made princes, but I didn't acknowledge them. God is simply saying, you can have political leaders. He said, and I didn't put them there and I'm not behind them and I'm not acknowledging them. But you can, you can have them, you can get them. So Daniel is praying. Uh, he's actually been praying for an answer to prayer and he's praying for 21 days. He's doing a, a, a partial fast. He's not eating meat. He's only drinking water, no bread, of the things that he mentions. And uh, the Bible says the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now, the angel Gabriel has come. And Gabriel says the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the archangels, one of the chief princes came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the prince of Persia. Now, there is the prince of Persia who is stopping the archangel Gabriel from bringing an answer to prayer to Daniel. This is not a man. It's an evil spirit that is withstanding. Again, Satan himself is referred to as the king of Tyre. He was behind the scenes moving. Remember, Jesus speaks to the church, and he says, when he has risen from the dead, he says, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. Now, what we typically think is Jesus said, make disciples in all nations, but that's not what he said. He said, make disciples of all nations. He wants nations to be his disciples. He wants governments to be his disciples. By the way, Isaiah prophesied about Jesus. This is what he said. And of the increase of his government, Jesus what? Jesus government or kingdom, there will be no end. Now, most of us, when, when we think about what is Christianity, what we think of, oh, Christianity is religion. Christianity is a way to get to heaven. Um, but, but by the way, uh, that's not what it is. Um, when Jesus has risen from the dead, this is what he said to his disciples. He's telling them what he is leaving them. And this is what he said. He says, I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed upon me a kingdom. Christianity is not a religion. In Christianity, really, we, we might say, well, it's a way to be forgiven. It's a way to have peace with God. It's a way to go to heaven. And those are all true things. But that's not what Christianity is. Christianity is a kingdom. It is a kingdom. Jesus came saying the kingdom of God is at hand. Saying it's here, it's now, it's available, it's for you. And I, I can't go into it all, but the mystery of the kingdom is that the kingdom is now, but the kingdom is coming. Do you realize the king is coming back? 
Philippians chapter 2 says this. It says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is a day when Jesus is going to come back and he will enforce the kingdom. It will be enforced. And the Bible says he will rule with a rod of iron. So Jesus said, make disciples of nations. We just think, well, just get a couple of people. No, 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 no. Jesus wants the whole nation. Um, Jesus said in Matthew, excuse me, Luke 18, 11, 18. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? What does Satan have? He has a kingdom. What does Jesus come to establish? A kingdom. When you receive Jesus, the Bible says in Colossians 1, he translates you out of the kingdom of darkness and puts you into the kingdom of the son of his love. Christianity is a kingdom. And if you've received Jesus, you're a part of his kingdom. So in Ephesians chapter 6, Satan's kingdom is actually described. One translation says it like this. For we're not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against persons without bodies or spirits that don't have bodies, demon spirits, evil spirits. It continues, the evil rulers of the unseen world, those mighty satanic beings and great evil princes of darkness who rule this world. Who rules this world? Evil princes of darkness. How many of you have noticed some of it? Evil princes of darkness are ruling. And against a huge number of wicked spirits in the spirit world. The Amplified says it like this. It says, for we're not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical appointments, but against despotisms, against powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places, the supernatural sphere. So Satan has a kingdom, and and he is ruling the world through these demonic spirits behind the scenes. You you may look, and you 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 wouldn't know it unless you read your Bible. And by the way, God gave us a Bible to change the way that we think. But let me show you a few examples of this. In Acts chapter 16, it says, uh, in the sixth verse, it says, And they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the proconsul, Servius Paulus, an intelligent man. Now, this false prophet, this sorcerer, who is literally possessed by the devil, where is he? He's with the proconsul. He's with the highest political leader in the entire region. Why? So he can affect him. That's why. This man called, the the proconsul called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Emmaus, the sorcerer, for so is his name translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Now, if you send your children today, to a secular university, their unwritten goal is to turn your children away from the faith. That is their unwritten goal. When your child leaves, they want your child to be an agnostic, an atheist, or liberal in their theology. I'm not saying you can't go. I'm just saying you need to know beforehand. This is, this is their goal. It may not be written in a pamphlet or someplace you can find it, but that is their goal. They want you liberal in your theology, and they want you liberal in your, pol- in your political views because they go like that, hand in hand. He's seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. 
Then Saul, who's called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you'll be blind. You'll not see the sun for a time, and immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed, I think so. <laughs> when he saw what had done, was done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. But I want you to notice, where is this, as Paul said, son of the devil? He's right with the most powerful political figure in the entire region. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it, it really, it's a, it's a, a picture it's teaching about eschatology, end time theology. What's going to happen in the end times? And specifically, parts of this are talking about the Antichrist. This is what it says, verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Now, there, there's different interpretations here of the falling away or the catching away. But I, I want you to understand that much of what we at one time, just, just 10, 15 years ago, would have said, hey, these people believe what we believe. These people are evangelical Christians following the Bible. One of the most influential evangelical churches in America, I, I would no longer call them evangelical, but I, I just saw this in the last couple of weeks. They're having a conference, a family conference and the purpose of this conference is to help families affirm their LBGTQ children. They have two homosexuals that are the main speakers at the conference, both of which are married to different homosexuals. And they're trying to teach you how to affirm your children. Listen, that is not of God, all right? And has there been a falling away? There has most definitely been a falling away. And the man of sin, that's the Antichrist, is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or worshiped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I told you these things? Now, one thing that has to happen is, is we look at end times. There is going to be this man of sin, the Antichrist. The Bible is very clear. He's going to come and he's going to make a treaty of some type with Israel for seven years. Part of the treaty is going to be that Israel is allowed to rebuild the temple. And they will rebuild that temple. And the Antichrist goes into the temple. The book of Daniel is extremely clear on this. And in fact, we may even do a message uh, out, of, uh, um, out of Daniel on Daniel's trilogy, his three revelations about the end times. But the Antichrist goes into that temple. He stops the sacrifices and declares himself to be God. All right, that's what he's talking about right here. Uh, what did he say? Opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that while I was with you, I still told you these things? Verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed. The Antichrist is the lawless one. That's who he is. Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, I mentioned the lawless one because I want to just say something here. This whole defund the police movement is demonic. It is the Antichrist spirit. And I'm not saying every police officer is perfect. But I believe 99% of our policemen are good and they're trying to do the right thing. All right? And to, to say lawlessness, to, to, to just say, let's just get rid of them so that lawlessness can abound? Where does that come from? That's the Antichrist spirit. Now, the Bible says the Antichrist is coming, but the Antichrist spirit is already in the world. Hitler had the Antichrist spirit. 
Haman had that Antichrist spirit in the Old Testament. And there have been people throughout history who've had that Antichrist spirit. But what we see today in the defunding of the police movement, it is the Antichrist spirit that is ultimately behind that. The lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed. I think that's so interesting. All right? Now, the Bible tells us this about those policemen, Romans 13. For he is God's minister to you for good. He's God's minister to you for good. And as a believer, we need to recognize that. Is every policeman perfect? No. And, and there are things that need to be dealt with. But I'm just saying, it's the Antichrist spirit to go, let's get rid of this. Let's let lawlessness abound. It is wrong and it is ungodly. When Jesus comes back, again, Isaiah said of the increase of his government. So what is Jesus coming to bring? Government. And he's going to rule as Lord of lords and king of kings. And the Bible says he will rule with a rod of iron. He will rule, he will bring law and order. Revelation 13, verse 1, or let's go down to the fourth verse. It says, and they worship the dragon. The dragon is Satan, who gave authority to the beast. The beast is the Antichrist. And they worship the beast, saying, who is like the beast and who can make war with him? Satan himself will give his authority and dominion to be used by the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? He's a political leader who tries to take over the entire world. Revelation chapter 16. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Who's the dragon? Satan is the dragon. Out of the mouth of the beast, the Antichrist. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. And they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth. Who do they go out to? The kings, the presidents, the prime ministers, those that are leading nations. Satan really tries to pervert entire societies and entire nations and cultures by perverting our leaders. Right? That's who the Satan is going to try to move through. Again, we know positively we're of God. You've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. And the whole world around us is under the power of the evil one. We're seeing it in our culture. We're seeing it in our schools. We're seeing it in our nation. 22 times in Jesus' ministry in the four gospels, you'll find these words, an unclean spirit. It is a sexually perverse spirit. Now, again, I know what I'm going to say right now is not politically correct, but it is biblically correct. And I want to say this. We love every person, every person. But if someone is running towards a cliff and you see that they're running towards the cliff and you don't say stop, how many of you know you do not love that person? You do not love them if you don't say stop when you see them running towards a cliff. And there are people running towards a cliff of eternity that will take them down to the bottomless pit. And we need to say stop. We need to say stop. The LGBTQ is motivated by an unclean demonic spirit. It's not genetic, it's not natural, it's demonic. Gender dysphoria being promoted in our schools is normal. That is, I'm, there is a demonic spirit that is behind that. That is demonic. And the administration that we have right now in Washington promoting that is being motivated by the Antichrist demonic spirit. Daniel chapter 11, verse 37, he, the Antichrist, will have no interest in the God of his ancestors, nor the desire for women, nor the desire for women. 
the Antichrist will be a homosexual. Which only makes sense when, when that demonic spirit is going to try to get him to do everything that is against nature and that is unnatural. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, listen to this. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. But listen to this. And such were, such were some of you. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I don't care what iniquity you were in. You can be washed, sanctified, justified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and be a part of the kingdom of God. Doesn't matter where you've been. What matters is what you do with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's what matters. Romans chapter 1. Worse followed, verse 26. Refusing to know God. They soon didn't know how to be human either. Women didn't know how to be women. Men didn't know how to be men. Sexually confused. That's our nation today. That's what's being taught. Sexual confusion. They abuse and defile one another. Women with women. Men with men. All lust, no love. And then they paid for it. Oh, how they paid for it. Emptied of God and love, godless and loveless wretches. Since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering them and let them run loose. And that is what we're seeing in our culture today. New King James. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. What kind of passions? Vile passions. Even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Unnatural. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful. But, you know, they're trying to put books in, in our school for first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth graders. And this is what they're promoting. It's shameful. It's against nature. It's unnatural. And receiving in themselves the penalty of their heir, which was due. And even as they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. That's one of the things that we see the demonic influencing in our society today. The other thing that, that I want to mention is, uh, is abortion. You know, it was made the law of the land in 1973. And basically what it was, abortion on demand, um, what it said was this. It says that an unborn child is not protected by the Constitution of the United States. And I want to remind you, in the 1850s, the Supreme Court made a similar decision. And they said any black person is not protected by the Constitution of the United States. How many know that was about the dumbest thing they could have ever done? But they did it. And today they say that an unborn child is not protected by the Constitution of the United States. But I'm going to tell you just very simply what God thinks about abortion. Number one, in Genesis chapter one, God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Every child is created in God's image and God's likeness. The book of Hebrews says this, be in subjection to the father of spirits. The spirit that's in that child did not come from the parents. The spirit in that child came from God. And God is the father of that child. You wonder why abortion's wrong? That's why it's wrong. So the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that people in the last days will be without natural affection. 
You know, when, when you want to take the life of your unborn child, that is without natural affection. Second Kings 21, 16. Moreover, Manasseh shed very much innocent blood till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to the other. Besides his sin, by which he made Israel to sin in doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Listen, he made Israel sin. As leaders go, so goes a nation. As leaders go, so go a nation. But he shed innocent blood. This is what he did. He worshiped Baal and he worshiped Moloch. Those were the two ancient deities in which you would take and commit infanticide. You would literally burn your newborn child to death. The Bible says he shed innocent blood. In Exodus 21, it says, if men fight and hurt a woman with child so that she gives birth prematurely, yet no harm follows, he shall surely be punished according to the woman's husband and impose on him, and he shall pay as the judge determines. But if harm follows, he shall give life for life, eye for eye. Tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Here's what God just said. That unborn child is just as much a person as you are. Just as much a person as you. God said to Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. God knows that child. In Psalms 139, It says, your eyes saw my substance yet being unformed. And in your book, they were written, the days fashioned for me. As is yet, there was none of them. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, goes and sees Elizabeth, who's pregnant with John the Baptist, Mary says, greetings. And John the Baptist leaps in Mary's womb. She's six months pregnant. And the Bible says, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Understand that? Unborn children having spiritual experiences with God. And and this is, if somebody's had an abortion, this is not to condemn you at all. There's the blood of Jesus. You can be washed. You can be justified by the blood of the lamb. You, you, You can be right with God. I'm not saying this to condemn somebody. I'm just saying our nation has gone crazy. Our nation has gone crazy. And and as part of the kingdom of God, we need to pray. We need to stand up for righteousness. And and we need to vote. Amen. You get rejected. Hallelujah. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, Jesus said. Revelation chapter 20. It says, then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, who's the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he shouldn't deceive the nations, should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years were finished. But after these things, he will be released for a short time. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the witness to Jesus and the word of God and who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their forehead and on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And the rest of the dead didn't live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he as part in the first resurrection over Such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, when the thousand years have finished, Satan will be released from prison for a short time. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back as king of kings and Lord of lords. He's coming back, and the Bible says of the increase of his government, there will be no end. He's going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. By the way, six times in seven verses. Thousand years, thousand years, thousand years, thousand years, thousand years, thousand years. How many of you get it? Thousand years. And then after that, it's the eternal kingdom. 
eternal kingdom. I'm saying all that to say this. We win. We flat out win. Right? But wherever you go, you need to bring the kingdom. You say, I'm a plumber. Well, you, you plumb like Jesus would plumb. <laughs> you say, I'm a farmer. Run that tractor like Jesus would run that tractor. You're a lawyer? Well, be a lawyer like Jesus would be a lawyer. Right? You bring the kingdom of God wherever it is that you go. Pray. Jesus said, pray your kingdom come and pray. And then lastly, vote. Vote. Right? Don't be lazy. Don't think it doesn't make a difference because it makes a difference to God if you vote, just like it makes a difference to God if you pray. So vote. You know, the Bible is God's word. It is God speaking to us. And we often say the Bible has the answers to all of life's questions, and it does have all the answers. But the Bible also has the greatest questions. Let me just give you a few of them. For example, the Bible asks this question, what is your life? Now, if I were to ask some people, what's your life? Somebody would say, well, my life's happy. Somebody else would say, my life's a wreck. Somebody would say, my life's my family. Somebody would say, well, my life is my job. Somebody might say, my life's going nowhere. But the Bible answers the question and says, your life is but a vapor that's here for a moment and it's gone. Uh, we live in the North Country. And in the winter, you go outside and you breathe and you can see your breath. It's a vapor. And in two, three seconds, it's gone. The Bible says, in light of eternity, the time that you're going to spend here on this earth, in this physical body that you're living in, it's just like a few seconds. It's just a vapor and it's gone. The next question the Bible asks is this, what will the end be? What will the end be? Now, the, by the way, it is multiple choice, but there's only two choices. The end, when your body wears out and dies, you're either going to spend an eternity with God we refer to that as heaven, or you're going to spend an eternity separated from God, which is referred to as hell. There are no other options. And then in the book of Acts, there's a man who's been a jailer, and he comes to the apostle Paul, and this is his question, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? You see, there is something you need to do, and it's receive what God has done for you. Jesus went to the cross, shed his blood, and paid for your sin. He died and rose again, victorious over death. And if you need forgiveness, and everyone does, Jesus is the only Savior. He paid for your sin. And the Bible says, to as many as receive him, to them he gives the right to be the children of God. Now, I want to pray with you to receive Jesus. If you don't know where you stand with God, you're away from God, I'm, gonna, I am, I'm begging you, pray this prayer from your heart and give Jesus your heart and life and receive him as your king and your savior. So I want you to make these words your own. Pray this prayer out loud. Say, oh God, I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe his blood paid for my sins and I believe he rose again. I, I give him all of my heart and all of my life. I hold nothing back. I receive Jesus as my King and my Lord, and I'm going to live for him. And I thank you. You've heard my prayer. I'm forgiven. My past is gone. I'm a part of your kingdom and your family today and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, we have written a book especially to help you keep on growing in your spiritual life. We want to get it to you absolutely free. All the information is right there on your screen. And thank you so much for being with us today. God bless. If you just prayed that prayer with Pastor Dwayne, congratulations. You're making one of the best decisions of your life. If you're still working on that decision, we have people standing by at walkingbyfaith.tv who want to answer your questions. Just like Pastor said, we'd love to send you a free copy of his book, Your New Life. Log on to walkingbyfaith.tv where you can have a copy mailed to you, download it instantly, or check out our audiobook. You can also find all these things on our app. 
This free book is a great resource as it's full of practical advice and encouragement to help you live a life of faith. Claim your free copy today. Walking by Faith is changing lives and we want you to be a part of it. Your gift will help continue to produce inspiring content that encourages people to change the way they think and empower them to use their voice. When you sow into God's kingdom, He will pour out a blessing upon you just like it says in Malachi 3.10. There are three easy ways to give. Text WBF GIVE to 1-888-364-GIVE. Visit walkingbyfaith.tv slash give or click on the giving icon in our app. Thank you for your support. If you're in need of prayer for any reason, we'd love to connect with you. By scanning this QR code, you can send us a prayer request, download our app, read our weekly devotionals, and so much more. To rewatch today's episode with closed captions, you can now find us on Rumble. I pray that the wisdom gained from this series will not only shield you, but also empower you to be a beacon of light in a world that desperately needs it. Have a great week.